Okay, I'm going to assume that you're all lawyers. This session is done on a general basis. So it's done to support any uh, manager or team leader understanding change management principles and practices. So change management is a field of study. It is a profession. It's also a set of tools and techniques that people can use to lead teams through change. Now that's happening constantly. Every working environment is full of change and we can reduce the anxiety and we can reduce the performance dip that comes with change by using some frameworks and some tools to support everybody through the change. So that's what I'm going to be sharing today. Organisations that have embedded change management capability are twice as likely to have successful projects because what change management does, it helps employees and staff and stakeholders to adopt the changes faster, more completely and more proficiently. They stay engaged during sometimes periods of disruptive change. They understand why the change is happening and they have the time and the tools to get on board. So there are three basic states of change. We have today, the transition and tomorrow. So it's the concept of the state that we're in today will be ending we will be transitioning to a new state. So it's a change of state. So it's all about supporting staff through change. So Kubler-Ross have done some really interesting research and they have developed some models. Some of you may have heard of them because they are the drivers of um, a particularly useful grief model, five stages of grief, although I think now it's recently been upgraded to the seven stages of grief. Well, sometimes so many people are attached to the current state, to the today state, that they actually need to go through a bit of a grieving process in order to get to the future state of tomorrow. So Kubler-Ross have actually come up with this change curve. It's a very standard one that a lot of people in the change industry use.